You're listening to the Around the Bases of Birdland podcast on Fox Sports 1340AM.com. Now here's your host, Brian H. Waters. To say the Orioles face Judgment Day would be an understatement. This week, that's the best thing that can be said. You know, when I thought that we would begin this show this week, on Friday night I was thinking, you know, this is going to be a fun game to talk about. How the Orioles just blew out the Yankees. How they scored 11 runs and was able to hold that team to just four runs. Gosman finally gets on track. Trumbo finally goes deep. Manny Machado goes deep. That's what I thought we were going to be talking about. But ladies and gentlemen, Brian H. Waters here. And thank you for listening. You know, us true Oriole fans out there, our fandom was put to the test this week. Now, if you've been a fan of this team, you this Farley isn't the worst thing that could happen. I mean, 15 consecutive years that we're talking about before Adam Jones became the superstar that he is, before Manny Machado was called up, before Buck Showalter was hired. You know, we endured the pain, the struggles. But Friday night, Orioles, they made a game that they had a game that we're not going to forget for a long time. They had a game in which, you know, they just dropped. I mean, and you, you where do you go? Where do you go wrong? Where do you who do you blame? You know, for those who missed it on that night, the Orioles jumped out. Kevin Gosman was pitching and everybody knows Gosman has been struggling. Well, at one point, Mark Trumbo comes up to bat, and he hits a grand slam home run. And I, I was sitting there with my daughter, and we're watching the game. My daughter's too. She's starting to learn how to say sports names. Only thing she really knows the difference is between WWE. And I had this feeling. So the bases were loaded, and I just said, I think Trumbo's going to go yard here. What happens? He goes yard. It's a grand slam home run. Just his second home run of the season. His first home run came on opening day. So, you know, everybody's excited. Orioles have a huge lead. And they continue pouring on. And to the point it was 9-2. to two. Then the Yankees, Aaron Judge, hits a home run. Makes the score 9-4. to four. And you think, all right, that's cool. So what? But then... The Orioles jumped right back out there. They went up 11-4. Judge came back up. He would hit another home run. It was down, and it's Jacoby Ellsbury, and they showed the sword. He's never hit a grand slam. What does he do? He hits a grand slam. It's 11-8. And you know, this game isn't out of reach. Anybody knows, they have a saying in baseball, no lead is safe. So, when Jacoby went yard, his first grand slam of his career, that made everybody start thinking, uh-oh. But then, you know, the Yankees score again. And what many people call, shout out to Chris Weagle, Fox Sports, 1340 AM, 96.9s, one of our baseball social media guys. He was texting me. He's a huge Yankee fan. And when Castro hit that home run and he was on his knees, it was just like a proposal. And if you're an Orioles fan, you wish she said no, but the ball said yes and then left. And then we're playing extra innings. So I'm going to be real with you. I got up. I was hungry. I left. I went to get something to eat. And as I'm driving back home, I hear the announcers say, way back, back, back. Gone! Home run! And the Yankees have won the ball game. Matt Holiday hits a home run. The Orioles go ahead and lose that game 11 to 14. But you know, in a game like that, you're not going to forget it. But the beauty of baseball is that you have the next day. You live to fight again. It's not like football, you have to. Think about it an entire week. And basketball, if it's not a night of back-to-backs, you have extra night. Think about it. Most cases, yes, you do have a day off in baseball sometimes. But sometimes you might, a lot of times you get a chance to go the next day. 
And that was the case. It was the beginning of the series. The Orioles, their offense were finally getting on track from what fans were seeing. You know, like I said, Trumbo and Machado, two people who are very crucial in this office. They were both win yard. But then you see Hobaldo Jimenez come up. And, you know, a good buddy of mine calls him trick or treat. And the reason is because you just don't know what you're going to get. You don't know if he's going to go out there and he's going to have a great game or you don't know if he's going to go out there and have a bad game. Fans remember a year ago, well, not a year ago, but a season ago, in September, he was phenomenal. I said he finally got it together. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that September Jimenez come to this April. But nonetheless... It's a Saturday afternoon baseball. Maybe the Yankees will be spent. Not the case. Judgment Day would happen again for the Baltimore Orioles. Yes, Aaron Judge. And, I mean, if you look at this guy, I've, the best analogy, somebody said he looks like a creative player. He looks like somebody who you can max out his stats in a baseball video game. And... You know, he could, I mean, the dude looks like he's LeBron James. <laughs> you know, some people call him Baby Babe. But, he, you know, he went homer again. Jimenez had seven, six earned runs. And then uh, Nuno, he came back in. He was the one who kind of got things going in the wrong direction Friday night with the uh, giving up the grand slam to Jacoby. He gives up two runs. Aquino gives up three. So the Orioles pitcher just was not on in this series in the beginning of it. Luckily for the O's, they were able to bounce back on Sunday. And, I mean, it went to extra innings. And they were up four to two. And an opportunity to leave New York with at least one win. Um, this is the first series loss for the Orioles. But they, they would be avoiding the sweep. Unfortunately... They had to play free baseball. Uh, Hart comes in and uh, he blows the save, his first blown save of the year. But you know he, the runners that was that he inherited would score, and they would go to extra innings. And you know Orioles fans were happy, uh, very thankful for the heroics in the end by their stars. And next thing you know, they come away with the victory. But now, you know, you're looking forward. You got Boston coming up this week. We remember what happened last week, you know. Um, and the best thing is, the Orioles are, they've been playing very well in the division. Uh, they had um, some interesting games, to say the least, the, earlier this week with the Tampa Bay Rays, where. They, you know, they went in the extra innings. They were losing. They forced the extra innings, started losing again, was able to come away with the victory on a walk. But, you know, it's not panic mode. They're tied in first place with the New York Yankees. And the bottom line is the Yankees are good. There's no doubt about it. Are they your dad, Jake, or say your granddad, or maybe even your Yankees you grew up with? Maybe not, at least not just yet, but they're good. And, I mean... Orioles fans have nothing to be sad about. 15-8 and eight to finish the month of April, which is good. Um, it's very good. This is a team that many people aren't expecting to win um, the division. Many people aren't even expecting to be in the playoffs. But that's why you play the games, folks. So next, um, I want to talk about the pitching. But before we go there, I want to remind you guys to make sure that you're in the Richmond area or you nearby or you might be in California and you want to meet Teddy Long. Well, we have the place for you. The Mid-Atlantic Wrestling Expo, which will be on May the 20th, 2017. It's actually a weekend, I believe, May 19th and May 20th at the Richmond Convention Center. Make sure you follow us at 1340 AM Fox Sports for details. Make sure you're also following them at MA Wrestling Wrestle Expo where you can meet Teddy Long and you can also meet the one and only Faye Jackson. Faye's a good friend of mine. So I'm telling you, see somebody you want to meet. And guess what? Teddy just came out of the Hall of Fame, you know. Holla, 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 player. Make sure you get down there to meet him. Also, speaking of wrestling, 
make sure on May 13th you are in the Flyer Skate Zone in New Jersey. That is Voorhees, New Jersey, where you can see WSU, Women's Superstar Uncensored. They're having a cage match, folks, where you can find The Reckoning, which consists of Annie Social, Sue Young, Brittany Blake, Samantha Heights, and their leader, Chrissy Rivera, taking on Team Leva. And Leva's coming with family, folks. She has the one, the only, Mia Yim, Beta Scott, Zandra Bell, and she has Missy Sams to join her. Now, guess what? The reason why you want to see this, because like I said, you got the ladies in the cage. You got Missy Sampson and Annie Social finally going to get the chance to, Missy's going to finally get a chance to put her hands on Annie after Annie turned on her weeks ago. Then you're going to also see Chrissy and Leva go at it. Leva's been waiting to get her hands on Chrissy because it was Chrissy who cost Leva the WSU Spirit Championship. So make sure you join us there. And in the, that's going to be the main event. And for the title, you get to see Nevaeh challenge the new champion, Mercedes Martinez. So make sure you join us there at WSU. Now, let's talk about this Orioles pitcher. What do we have here? I'm not sure. I'm, you know, we have the constant. We have Dylan Bundy. We know Bundy is solid. And let's look. Bundy, we expected him to be a strikeout pitcher, you know, 9,900 miles an hour. He was, some people call him, you know, something. We thought we was going to finally get like a, a solid uh, Randy Johnson type, somebody who was feared. Fortunately, Tommy John sent him back. And now he's pitching. He's still getting no strikeouts, but now he's got different set of pitches and but he's becoming the star that we want to see Kevin Gosman that's the guy that he they gave him the, the ball on opening day but he just hasn't really been able to get his niche and I, you feel bad for him because Monday so Friday night was the night Friday was going to be the night in which he was going to get his victory now many people might question why didn't Buck show Walter leave him in why couldn't he finish the seventh well, if you were watching the game, you saw he kind of started getting roughed up. You could see fatigue setting in. Um, many might say, why not leave Michael Givens in there? But nonetheless, you know, it is what it is. But um, so you, you, when I look at this team, I see Bundy, yes. Gosman still a question mark. Jimenez, uh, no. We've, we've come to that conclusion. It's not going to work. And then we also have... The one, the only, um, Wade Miley. Now, Miley, somebody that a lot of us Orioles fans just harped on all last year when we, the Orioles traded for him, and he just didn't turn out. But now he's been more solid. He's been better. So, but these are the guys that the Orioles need to see step up. Now, I think Jimenez is on his way to the bullpen. Um, you can't send him down to the minors, and he has a contract that I just don't see anybody picking up so i see him going to the bullpen soon a uh, shout out to my good friend patrick smith uh you could catch his work uh it's crammed in yards and i'll make sure i plug in his website next time pardon me for not having it on me but follow him at crammed in yards or smitty at hopkins um and you can see his information there but you know we was talking we talk a lot of order baseball throughout the week and he you know he brought up a good idea you know he said he would be probably in the bullpen but then you also have um, Logan Verrett. So, what's his role going to be? Is he going to be in the bullpen, or is he going to work his way to the starting rotation? I say this on the video game, my video game. He's in the starting rotation, but clearly, Orioles fans can't wait for Chris Tillman to get back. And then there's Zach Britton. Britton, uh, clearly, he's proven his worth by not being there because we want to see him there. Um, you know, we we do. We want to see. Britain on the main um want to see him back in that bullpen we want to see him closing the door because he's solid he's the short thing he hasn't blown a save and that's what Oriole fans want to see so this is going to be interesting they said that he would be um he's going to report to Boston for the opener but you have to believe he's pitched two times uh in rehab that he's not going to uh come in tomorrow 
Um, so only time will tell. Uh, but I do look to see Zach Britton in this series going against the Boston Red Sox. And this will be a fun series to watch. We all know what happened uh, last week. You know, we talked about it here. So only time will tell. And so, you know, but before I'm going to switch over, we're going to talk about the hitters. But before I go there, you know, I got to got to pay you. Got to do the promos. Make sure you tune in to the Threes a crowd sportscast right here on Fox Sports 1340AM.com. This week they have Adam Woodard on as a special guest, so definitely want to look forward to hear what they have to say about him, as well as the NBA playoffs. If you haven't been paying attention, the Utah Jazz have eliminated the Los Angeles Clippers. You have to believe that is the end of Lob City. I got to get on somebody's show to talk about that because I'm a Lakers fan, and I said, you know, the Clippers were overrated. Only time will tell. I've been telling people. So uh, make sure you are catching threes of crowd sports with Ray, Kelsey, and James. Follow them at three, the number three. A crowd, three S A crowd sports, and make sure you are also tuned in to the MC Sports Report. They're going to have some updates live from this past NFL draft. Mike and Cody were both in Philadelphia for the draft, along with um, our business manager Corey Saunders. So definitely want to tune in and hear what they have to say. And you know you're gonna get the great hockey conversation. Um, <laughs> I saw a best tweet. The Nationals defeated the New York Mets 23 to 5. And yes, that's 23 to 5 Nationals and, and Mets. Um, and most people said that was their them taking their frustration out on DC Sports because the Wizards lost game one of the second round and the Capitals lost set game one and two of the second round. Capitals losing to the defending champion Pittsburgh Penguins. So now we're in our final segment of the show. We're going to talk about the hitting. You know, um, I know a lot of people are disappointed in the Orioles uh, bats right now. You know, they, they just haven't got going the way they would like to see. We want to see the long ball. You know, they, as they always say, chicks dig the long ball. But we haven't seen that happen. We haven't seen uh, Manny become that threat at the plate every time. We haven't seen Mark Trumbo become that threat at the plate every time. I haven't even seen Chris Davis become that threat. Yes, Jonathan Scope has been a threat. Yes, the Orioles won a lot of two to nothing, three to nothing, one to nothing ball games, but they want the offense to keep going. And look, it's a long season. Anybody knows you would rather the offense start slow and then heat up towards the end rather than the other way around. We've seen that in the past. So only time will tell. Trey Mancini, he's a guy people enjoy watching. Unfortunately, he plays a position where it's just he got to get in where he fit in. Joey Rickard, somebody, you know, he brings him and Gentry bring speed to that lineup, and that's something you want to see. Um, you have to admit the Orioles are playing a different type of game. It's not all about the long ball. You know they are playing small ball. They are stealing some bases. Something they haven't been doing. So definitely want to see that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, make sure that you know I'm gonna get ready to wrap this up before I go. Make sure you are tuned in each and every week to Around the Bases of Birdland podcast. Um, Myself, I'll be bringing on some special guests very soon. Make sure you are tuned in to the MC Sports Report tomorrow. Threes of Crowds Sports. Make sure you tune in uh, Soul and Sports. Oh, and definitely tune in to the Wrestling Marks of Excellence Radio. They are the first show on this Fox Sports Radio. The first show. And what I mean, the first show. The first show that turned this place around. Fox Sports 1340AM.com. They are the uh, godfather, which... Glenn Thomas, the sports director, him and Corey Saunders both are on the show and they give you all the wrestling conversations you need. Look for them to have some special guests, especially as we get closer to the Mid-Atlantic Wrestling Expo, because that is what will be brought to you by Fox Sports Radio 1340. So we're presenting that event. So we definitely want you to come out. Um, We're going to be there. Come say hi, take some pictures, uh, get some autographs and, you know, meet some fan, meet some people. We definitely looking forward to meeting the fans. So. Um, that'll be it ladies and gentlemen until the next time i am brian h waters i thank you for your time make sure you tweet me at brian h waters tweet me your thoughts let me know what did you think about the show let me know what you thought about the orioles look judgment day has come and gone and we won't have to worry about for a while so matter of fact let's look it up you know because aaron judge is a beast there's there's no other way to put it aaron judge is that dude um 
it, will people figure him out? I mean, that that question goes for any and every baseball player, honestly. So only time will tell. But the next time Orioles will face Judgment Day will be on May 29th right here in Baltimore. It'll be a three-game series. So they better get their act together because if they don't, the pitching don't get their act together, Judgment Day will not be fun.